The WD Porter was a Fletcher-class destroyer, one of 175 ships built to this specification, which made it part of the largest class of destroyers ever built. The ships were multi-purpose units that were capable of anti-air, anti-surface and anti-submarine operations. The Porter herself was laid down and launched in 1942, commissioned in July 1943, and would have a two-year operational career. The ship was armed with five single 5-inch 38 caliber guns, two at the front and three at the rear, two twin 40mm and four single 20mm anti-aircraft guns and a pair of quintuple torpedo launchers along with six depth charge projectors and two depth charge rails rounded out the armament. At 35 knots, the ships were fairly fast, even by destroyer standards, and benefited from being a clean slate design compared to earlier classes. Therefore, it carried this formidable armament without being top-heavy, a problem which had plagued a lot of other destroyer designs and allowed the hull to have modest upgrades and changes during the war without impacting performance. For added strength in the hull, the deck was continuous, although this did make them a little cramped and less able to deal with heavy seas than other designs which had an extra forecastle deck. So you might think, why focus on one random ship instead of covering the Fletcher class more generally? The answer is that this particular ship has a reputation for being spectacularly unlucky. Hitler should probably have given it the Iron Cross for services rendered to the Axis powers, and Emperor Hirohito should also have given it the Order of the Golden Kite. That would be the bird, not the toy. Or so the legend goes. However, this reputation is somewhat undeserved and overstated, although the ship did manage some fairly spectacular errors. Let's try and set the record straight by going over the most commonly stated claims one at a time. Claim 1. The ship managed to damage its sister ships just by leaving port. The story goes that, through not raising the anchor enough and backing out too close, the porter inflicted damage on adjacent destroyers by the simple act of leaving port on its first real mission. However, the log of the porter does not record this incident, nor do the logs of USS Cogswell or USS Young, the ships which were on either side of porter, so it seems unlikely that this particular event occurred, albeit that incidents similar to this were not uncommon at times during the Second World War. Claim 2. Once they had managed to reach their mission assignment, which was to escort USS Iowa across the Atlantic, they managed to drop a live depth charge overboard by accident, nearly either damaging themselves or the Iowa, depending on the account. Iowa, of course, carrying the President, and thus sparking a massive hunt for a U-boat, as everyone else thought the explosion was a torpedo from a submarine. Again, neither Porter nor Iowa's logs record either a depth charge detonation or a U-boat search on the day in question. They do both record the porter experiencing boiler failure and having to drop back until repairs could be made, so again it seems unlikely that this incident actually occurred. Claim 3. After Iowa conducted practice anti-aircraft drills, Porter, along with other escort ships, also demonstrated a torpedo drill by simulating a launch at Iowa. However, due to a mistake by the crew, the ship accidentally fired a live torpedo at the battleship, and then, owing to orders to maintain radio silence, used a signal lamp to inform them of the danger, but first misidentified the direction of the torpedo and then relayed the wrong message, informing Iowa that Porter was backing up rather than a torpedo was in the water. Finally, the destroyer broke radio silence, warning Iowa, which then had to turn hard to avoid being hit by the torpedo. President Roosevelt, meanwhile, learning of the incoming torpedo threat, asked his Secret Service attendee to move his wheelchair to the side of the battleship, so that he could watch. The torpedo then detonated in the ship's wake some 3,000 yards astern of the Iowa, which was unhurt, but according to legend, she then trained her main guns on William D. Porter out of concern that the smaller ship might have been involved in some sort of assassination plot. Following which, the entire crew was arrested. This claim is actually true for the most part, except for the part about the entire crew being arrested. Only the man responsible for the torpedo screw-up was arrested, and President Roosevelt intervened in his behalf, presumably because he found the whole thing hilarious. All in all, it's a pretty spectacular story, all of its own. Claim 4. After being reassigned to the Northern Pacific, a drunk sailor accidentally shelled the base commander's house with one of the ship's main guns. 
Whilst this claim is widely repeated all around the internet, I could not find any original sources backing this up, which should be available, as attacking your own base should have resulted in some kind of formal disciplinary hearing, one would think. Claim 5. The ship was sunk by an aircraft it had already shot down. This one is actually true. On the 10th of June 1945, an obsolete Aichi D-3A Val dive bomber dropped out of the clouds and made straight for the warship. The destroyer managed to evade the suicide plane, which hit the sea nearby, but momentum carried the aircraft directly beneath the porter, and then the explosives on board exploded. This lifted the ship out of the water and dropped it back down again in the manner similar to a modern keel-breaking torpedo. She lost power, steam lines shattered, and a number of fires broke out. For three hours, her crew struggled to keep the ship afloat, but eventually USS William D. Porter heeled over to starboard and sank by the stern. This is completely true, but it should also be noted that nobody on board was killed. All were recovered safely to nearby American ships. During its brief career, the ship had also shot down several dozen Japanese aircraft, supported and supplied American troops, and bombarded enemy positions. Pending further evidence from period sources, however, it would appear that apart from almost accidentally blowing up the American president and then sinking in a somewhat unique manner, this poor ship has suffered from an unjust reputation. That said, the true incidents alone would be enough to give it quite the feather in its cap. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.